learning should be a panacea. Let's begin in Gimel on the uh, middle of the page, Tanya. You see that 53a. Tanya was taught in a brisa. Amr Allah Bal Reb Shimon ben Gamliel Kashay Sameach Simchas Pesach Sheiva. They said about Reb Shimon ben Gamliel. Rabban Shimon ben Gamliel. Yeah. There's two of them. Doesn't tell us which one, though. Um, when he was rejoicing at the simple space of Sheva, do we know automatically which one it is? Because otherwise, the Gamliel of Yavna was after the, was at the end of the base of Migdash. Must have been his father. Um, it must have been the first. the first. When he was rejoicing at the symbol of the he would take eight torches, lit torches, and he would throw one and catch one. That means juggle. They wouldn't uh, knock into each other. They also say that when he would bow down, Put his two thumbs on the earth. And he would bow down. And he would kiss the floor. And he would be able to stand up. One of the words for bowing down is kida. That one is mishtachavet. The other one is um, it's called kida. It says it, was, it would be. Uh, it was on the face, face, face down. It was the type of bowing. How was Kida done? So he did this with um, putting his thumbs on the ground, and he would really hold himself up by his um, with the strength in his waist. That's how he would uh, lift himself back up. Now, Reb Shimon Gamliel was able to do this, but he was the only one that was able to do this. Levi Achvi Kida Kamid Rabbi Beitla. Levi tried to do this. Levi was a student of Rabbi. It's a friend of Rab. Probably the father of Rabbi Shub and Levi. Um, he tried to do this in front of Rabbi, but he became lame. He hurt himself. He wasn't able to, uh, to do this properly. He got hurt. The Gemara says, That's that's what caused Levi to limp. You should never accuse Hashem. It was a person that accused Hashem. He puts the blame. Uh, he accused Hashem. And he was uh, hurt because of this. Amana Levi. Yeah, the Gemara Rashi brings the Gemara Tainus that Levi complained to Hashem that you sit up in heaven and you don't uh, and you forsake your children. And because of that, Levi was became lame. He would limp. The Gemara says, "Have a garmalay." Have a garmalay. You're right. Both. There's two reasons for why for him becoming uh, becoming lame. Levi have a metal commander of the Tamli Sakine. Levi, the word is metal. Sounds like you would. And walk around, but um, it means that he would juggle. He would juggle in front of Rebbe with eight knives. Shmuel would juggle in front of King Shabor, Shabor, Shabor Malka. And, um, and he would do it, he would juggle with eight glasses of wine. Yeah, doesn't say if they were full. Yeah, Rashi says they were full. And they, they wouldn't spill. That's impressive. Uh, Abaya Kamei, the Raba, it was Raba, Raba, the Tamnaya Bay. Abaya would juggle with eight eggs. Ramla Barba Bay, and some say with four eggs. Okay. Tanya, Amar Abishua ben Hananya. Yeah, here we have some information about Abishua ben Hananya. 
Rabbi Shad ben Hanania was um, a student of Rabbi from Zaka. He was a friend of Rabbi Lazar ben Horkanes. He was the one that Rabbi Gamliel um, was um, deposed because of his conflict with Rabbi Shad ben Hanania. So who was this Rabbi Shad ben Hanania? Well, we, we know he's one of the five students. What was his personal um, lineage? Over here we learn that he was a lady. When we would rejoice, the simple space of Sheva, our eyes did not see any sleep. Rashi tells us he was a lady. He was one of the gate watchers. Uh, um, however, there's a diversion on the side, which is it? Says he was one of the singers. Yeah. Meshuarim or Meshuarim. Okay. So you're saying he had a role in that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. He was the, um, the reason, the cause of it. He, because of him, because Rabbi Gamliel insulted him. So they asked, they, they had to, yeah. There's a blacksmith, right? He was a lady. It says when we were rejoiced at the simple space of Sheba, we wouldn't sleep. Kate said, how was this? Well, right away in the morning was a sacrifice. Then we went to Daven. Now, a lot of people uh, don't know this. People think that in the time of the base of English, they didn't Daven. They just had sacrifices. All of this is post-temple. Um, uh, the, the, all of the shows and everything. It's not so. They daven then as well. Misham la carbon musaf. Well, after davening, they had to do the musaf. Misham la tefillah and musafin. And then they had to, they, they did the carbon musaf, then they had to go daven musaf. Misham la besam edash, but then they had to go learn. Misham la chilish but then they had to go eat. Misham la tefillah sa mincha, then they went to daven mincha. Misham la tamar shal ben arbayim. Then they had to go bring the afternoon sacrifice. We can't veil it for some close space of sheva, and then it was a simple space of sheva soon. That was like the uh, the schedule. They forgot to put uh, sleep in, inside that schedule. There was no time to sleep. Gemara says, Aini, is it really so? We have a statement from Rabbi Yechanan. Someone says, I'm not going to sleep for three days. He makes an oath. So you don't have to wait for him to violate it in order to give him lashes. You give him lashes right away. Malkin, I say, you give him lashes right away, Vyashalabda, let him go to bed. Um, because it's impossible to stay awake for three days. So you, he's going to fall asleep. We know he's going to fall asleep. He can't stay awake, awake for three days. There he's saying, seven days, the whole uh, circus, they didn't sleep. That's, not, that's a lie. So the Gemara says, Allahi kama, like ta'amna tamshina. We didn't taste the taste of sleep. Why? We would fall asleep on each other's shoulders. So they didn't have an enjoyable sleep. But it doesn't mean they didn't sleep. They, it's impossible to stay awake. They slept. Just um, they had those power naps. Okay. The Gemara tells us that there were 15 steps that went down from the courtyard, the Israelite courtyard, to the women's courtyard. And those 15 steps, the Gemara said, correspond to the 15 Shira Malas, 15 songs of ascent. Rav Chizda tells the rabbi that was arranging the, the Agadata in front of him, so, yeah, in the yeshiva, people had different positions. One of them was a Tana. You know, he memorized all the Bryces. He was the Amaira. He explained the, all the Bryces. And someone that was there that was arranging the Agana. So, he asked him, he says, Omale, he says, Do you have any idea why David, what was this corresponding to that David says, the 15 Shiramalas? What's the background to that? 
Amalei, so the fellow responds, Hachi Amar Rabbi Yechanan. Rabbi Yechanan said the following, Shoshakar David Shitin. When David was digging the, the caverns, the, um, the caves, in underneath the base of Migdash, this would uh, disagree with the opinion that says that they were there from the six days of creation. David was actually digging them. You know, he was making them into the foundation. So, Kofa Taima, the, the lower waters, the aquifers, started to rise up. And they were going to, they were going to um, submerge the whole world. This is scary. I guess he dug too deep. Yeah, <laughs> this is a problem. How did you know um, uh, when they made the um, the uh, foundation for the twin towers? So the waters from the Hudson were just coming in. They had to freeze. They, they had to freeze it. They got this way to, to freeze the waters. They should be able to dig and then to pour the cement. Well, well, they had to stop the waters. They had these refrigeration devices to be able to freeze the whole foundation to get it done. Anyway, this is a problem. <laughs> so you can imagine. The waters start to rise. David's building the base of Migdash, the foundation. And apparently he hit the wrong rock and uh, the water starts coming out and it starts to go up. So, Amr David, Chamesh Yashem Maylas, Vahiridan. So, David says the 15 Sharamalas and the water receives. The Gemara says, Really? Ihachi, Chamesh Yashem Maylas, Yardes me by lake. It shouldn't be Shir Hamalas, it should be Shir Hayardes, the song of descents, because it was trying to get the water down, not to get the water up. It wasn't the uh, ascent. The ascent was the problem. The water was coming up. He had to get it to recede. On Malay, he says, You're right. Now I remember what, what he actually said. He was correcting it now. When David was digging those um, caves, uh, in, it's like a fault, you know, like a crack in the earth. Uh, Kafa Tahima. The, the aquifers started to rise up. The, the lower water started to come up. Bola Mr. Falma wanted to flood the earth. Does anyone know if I'm allowed to write Hashem's name on a piece of clay? The problem is that they could use clay. They would use clay to like seal a jug. So he was going to take some clay and seal it. The problem is that the clay was floating up. It wouldn't, you couldn't get it in because it wouldn't sink down. You needed something heavy to weigh it down to, to plug it. So he said, I'm just going to write the name of Hashem on this piece of clay. The problem is if the name of Hashem is on the clay, it could get erased. And I'll throw it into this depth, this deep water. And it will stay there. It says, Leka the Kamale Midi. No one responded. No one knew if you're allowed to write the name of Hashem on this clay. Amr David called the David says, Whoever knows but not saying should choke. So made a Kavachaymer. It says, when it comes to make peace between husband and wife, the Torah says that my name, my name that's written in holiness should be dissolved in water to make peace. To make peace for the whole world. I'm sure my name should be erased. So it says, Amalei Shari. It says it's permissible. Shari is like, yeah. Okay, Kasev Shema Chaspa, he wrote Hashem's name on the clay, and it went into the um, deep waters, and the waters receded. 
Shita Alfe Garmide, 16,000 Amas. <coughs> he saw that the water is receding. I don't want it to recede. I want it to be close to the surface. Why? Because the moist soil would be better for the, uh, for the produce, for the fruits. Now it's just going to be all dry. And um, that's not good. Omar Chamishas Rimailas Vaske Vaske Chamisa Alfe Garmide. Look at Alfe Garmide. So now, because it receded 16,000 Amas, now he wants it to come back. So he, um, he says the 15 Sharamalas, and it comes back up 15, um, 15,000. Amas. It says 15 share miles, so it comes back 15,000 Amas. Wow. So it's 1,000 Amas away from the surface. Amar Ula, Ula says, Shmamina, Sumchadara, Al Figarmidi. Here you see the thickness of the crust is 1,000 Amas. That's about correct. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Vachazinan. Um, the Karina and Port of Anafki Maya, the Gemara says, one second. But we see that you dig a little and some water comes out. It should be, you should have to dig a thousand Amas before you get to water because it, 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 it receded 16,000 Amas. So you got it up 15,000. So now it's 1,000. So why, when you dig a little, you dig, uh, you know, to put your tree in, you already see water over there. So what's, um, what's going on? So the Gemara says, Avram Mishash Yahum is Soma de Pras. That's not really the lower waters. That is the ladders of the Euphrates. Well, I guess under, underneath the, um, around the Euphrates, there's these channels. And those channels, uh, the water is flowing through them. So when you're digging, you're getting from the water of the Euphrates. It's not really the lower waters. Okay. What do they call the um, artesian, artesian wells? Artesian wells are the wells that they come all the way up to the surface, right? Yeah. Okay. Ramdu Kayanim, the Shara Elyon, The Kayanim stood at the top gate and they blew the shafer. Not the shafer. The two, they blew the trumpets. At the time of Kreis Hagever, the time when the rooster crowed. And then they went down five steps or ten steps. And on the tenth step, they blew, they blew again. Oy Reb Yirmiya. Reb Yirmiya has a question. Lamai last year's denachas chamisha v'koya asara. Edilma denachas asara v'koya chamisha. What was really going on? They went down ten steps and they blew on the fifth step. Or they went down five steps and they blew... And the tenth step, it says it says they blew at the tenth step, but ten step from the top or ten step from the bottom, right? It's take it. He doesn't have an answer. I guess if you were there, you would see it. But um, okay. Tanur Rabbanu was taught in Nebraisa. He must mention a man named Kade. My idea, Shacharim Aleichal Hashem, is quoting the pasuk in Yecheskel, where it says that the people. Their faces were to the east, and their backs were to the to the chamber of Hashem. So, if they're facing east, of course, their back their back is to the hechel. What does it mean? The back is to the hechel. You have to tell me. Facing east means the back is west. But this means that they expose themselves that they were defecating in front of the hechel. To show to shame, uh, to shame Hashem. They were they were bowing to the sun, and that's what the people were saying when they were doing the um, uh, simple space of Sheva. They were saying we're not like those people that years ago that they worship the sun. We're we're bowing only to Hashem. And what would they say? Anu laka laka uh, we are to you, and to you are our eyes. Uh, Hashem. 
is that so? You're not supposed to say um, twice. Maidem. You say, we acknowledge you, Hashem, we acknowledge you, Hashem. You're not supposed to do that twice because it sounds like there's two Hashems. Hear this, the, the people are saying, we are to God and to God are our You're repeating. You shouldn't be repeating. Just say it once. This is what they would say. They bowed to the east. They're just the words over here. We bow to Hashem. And our eyes are hopeful to Hashem. So it's two separate statements. We bow to Hashem and we hope in Hashem. We put our hopes in Hashem. Okay. So it's not like repeating the same sentence, which that's a problem. It's another, uh, it's in a, another context. Okay. I'm not sure about that. I know, I'm not sure. I, I don't know what the Shteach Tzibbis Maidim, how that uh, started. But that, the problem with Maidim would be, and Chazan would say, Maidim, Anach Malach, and say again, Maidim, Anach Malach. Whoa, you know, excuse me. Okay. Mishnah says like this. Talking about blowing a trumpet in the um, in the base of Mikdash. It says in Mikdash. Every day there was at least twenty-one blasts of tkias in the Mikdash. Vein Mesifan al Arba Mishmaina. But there were no more than 48. 21 minimal, 48 maximum. <clears throat> Every day was a regular 21. Where do you get 21 blasts? What were they doing over there? So it says like this. Shalish Lipsichas Shara. When they would open the gates, the Shari Azara in the morning. They would blow the shayfar, and not not the shayfar. They would blow the chatzaytzers, blow the trumpets. Heisha l'tamet shel shacha. During the morning sacrifice, they sang a song. That song was divided into three parts. They bowed in middle. Um, so at each part, they blew they blew the shayfar three times. So that's a total of nine. So it was nine for the morning sacrifice. That happened also for the afternoon sacrifice. Another nine. Well, nine plus nine is 18, plus another three is 21. That's the daily um, regimen of the chatzaitzis, of the tzkiyas, the blasts. If that day had a carbon musaf, uh, it was like a rashchidesh or something. Shabbos. <clears throat> so you would get another nine. Why? Because during the carbon Musaf, they would also pour the wine and they would uh, they would also do the singing and they would blow the, the trumpets by the carbon Musaf. So that's another nine. Okay, it's 30. Was Arab Shabbos, instead of 21, you would get 27. You would get an extra six. What were those six? <clears throat> Three of them were to tell the people to stop working. And the other one was exactly when Shabbos was coming in, like the sirens, you know, in uh, Crown Heights. And I think in, in uh, Yerushalayim, they have sirens. So that was to tell everyone it's time to stop. You know, put the challenge, set the blech, you're done. <laughs> okay. That was another six. Oh. 
Maybe that's just an expression. Kodesh Lachal. Love the big Kodesh Lachal. You always say, like, um, men and women. You know, it's just a way of saying Kodesh uh, Lachal. You know, do we say being full of Kodesh? No, it's just, I don't know. I'm not sure where those, how those expressions came about. East and West. Say, say it differently. West and East. <laughs> really? Okay. Um, so, link here just to Arab Shabbos Shabbatay Chachag. Yeah, Rabbi Naftali was just asking that the 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 Chol is before, because it's Arab Shabbos. So it should be being lahavdo being Chol a Kodesh. But it could be the expression goes like that. Okay. Right. Okay. Erev Shabbos Here's where it gets interesting. Erev Shabbos in the middle of Sukkot. Middle of Sukkot. We're going to get some extra shofar blast now because of the simple space of Sheva. Not Shofar, I keep saying Shofar. It means Chatzetzus, it means the trumpet blast because of Tzkias. So then you would have Hayusham Arboim Ashmoina. You would have 48. Well, you have the regular 21, right? And then we're going to get an extra 27. So, okay, the three, uh, the opening of the gates, that's the, anyways there. Shalish Lashara El, you know, this is, this is part of your extra. Three blasts were at the, at the upper gate as they were walking down in the procession to get the water. They would, at, the, at the high gate, the Nikonar gate, they would blow. Shalish Lashara Tachnan skips the 10th step. At the lower gate, that means on their way out. Shalish Lamila Amayim. Then when they were filling up the water itself at the stream. Shalish Lagabim Mizbech, when they came back in on top of the Mizbech. So, where we're holding over here, we have an extra nine so far. Um, plus the uh, first three, which were always there. Teishal Atamit Shal Shach, Ravitesha Atamit Shal Bin Arvayim. So, so far, we have a regular 21 plus an extra nine. Teshal and Musafat. We had a 21 plus nine is 30. Now there's another nine is 39. Shalish le le battle as Ami Malacha. Shalish la Abdamin Kedis Lachal. Then we have an extra six. That doesn't do it. I'm missing three. Um, Taste of the Masafin. Let's do this together. Shalish of Sifasham. Three for the opening of the gates. Three for the upper gate, three for the lower gate, and three for filling the water. Oh, and three for on top of the altar. That's a total of 15. Three, five times three is 15. Now I have nine. It's 24. Another nine for the afternoon. 33. I have another nine for the Musa. 42. Now I have another six, which is a total of 48. Okay. Why? How'd we get to 48? Because it's a, um, it's Arab Shabbos in the middle of Sukkot. So I have an extra six plus um, an extra 12. It's just 18, that's not gonna do it. I need an extra. I need an extra 20, oh, an extra 12 plus nine. I need an extra 27, I need an extra 27. 
So what's the x? What's the extra twenty-seven? Well, the musaf is extra. That's nine. That takes him down to eighteen. And then Arab Shabbos is six because to separate the people from Mark and all that. So that takes me down to uh, twelve. And then the, um, the the water libation was twelve. Okay. This three. Uh, it was three, four times where they didn't drink. The Gemara says, "Must listen to like Rabbi Yehuda." The Mishnah. What time is this? Okay. Must listen to like Rabbi Yehuda. The Mishnah doesn't fit with Rabbi Yehuda. Tanya Rabbi Yehuda. I'm a pious lady. Please, Misheva, and my sister is called Sheishes Shrei. Yeah. Here we say the minimal amount. Our Mishnah says the minimal amount of of um, trumpet blasts was 21. And the most is 48. Rabbi Huda says the minimum is seven and the most is 16. What's going on? With my commitment, what's my life? Rabbi Huda Savar Tekia through a Tekia Achasi. For Rabbi Huda Savar Tekia Lachur Tekia Lachur. <clears throat> Very simple. You look at the ratios, um, seven and 16 is really, well, and let's do it the other way. 21 and 48 is really seven and 16. Seven times three, 21. And 16 times three, it's 48. So what Rabbi Hud is doing is Rabbi Hud is saying, Tkia true, a tkia is one. So the minimal is seven. And the maximum is 48, because that's 16 times three. And the Rabbanon are saying, no, tkia is one, true is one, and tkia is one. Okay, so he's counting them out. You end up with a larger number. It's really the same, uh, the same thing. But my commitment, what are they arguing about? Rabbi the Sever Tkia, Truet Kia Acha, see Rabban Sam Kilacho, the Trulacho, that you divide them up. My time with Rabbi Huda. Why does Rabbi Huda say that it's all one? He says, Well, Amar Kros Katam Trua. Says that you should blast the Trua. Now, it's the wrong word for the Trua. With the Hariyasim Trua. You should blow the Trua, not Scat, not Sakatam, the verb. That's used for blowing a tkia is being used for blowing a chua. It says, oh, because that's all one. What do you say? You can skip the parentheses. Rabbanon, the Rabbanon say, that's telling me different. That's telling me that before you blow the chua, you have to blow a tkia. It's not telling me that a tkia and chua is all one. Okay, this different second there. Rabbanon, my time, Ayo. What's the reason for the rabbis? that say that each one is separate. Uh, so you know why? Because it says that when you gather the people, you should blow a tkia, but do not blow a trua. If it's the same one, tkia and trua is really one. The Abish tells you to do half a mitzvah. If, if every time you blow a tzkiah, part of the mitzvah of the tzkiah is to blow a trua. So how could Abish tell you to blow a tzkiah without a trua? Telling you to do half a mitzvah. Rabbi Yudah, who is Simon Abalmo, who does That's not part of that's not a mitzvah. That's just when you have to tell the people to gather. Rabbanon, the Rabbanon says, Simon, I know that's just the symbol to tell the people to gather. But the Abish says it. So that becomes a mitzvah. Okay. Come on, Azla Hadam Rabkana, in being to kill the true of Halei Klum. Who's the one that says that you can't make a, a uh, pause in the cipher between a tki and a true? There's no pause, no breath. You have to go uh, da, 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 without any break, space. Rabkana says that. Who would that fit with? It says, Come on, Rabbi Yehuda. It probably goes with Rabbi Yehuda. Because Rabbi Yehud is the one that says that Ki and Shua are one. That means you shouldn't pause. Moses says, Pshita, that's so obvious, you didn't even have to tell that to me. Hmm. It says, Ma'o, the Tei Ma'afilu Karabonan. 
actually, we could have said that that wasn't the opinion of Rabbi, <laughs> of Rabbi Yehuda. We could have done this differently. We could have said that that's the opinion of the rabbis. And it's coming to argue on a, on a halacha that Rabbi Yechanan says, it's actually brother Shalton. Rabbi Yechanan says, the Rabbi Yechanan says, the Rabbi Yechanan says, the Rabbi Yechanan says, that if a person happens to hear nine chauffeur sh- sounds throughout the day, um, he's yaitza. From different people, just walking down the street, it wasn't uh, the same um, the same shul, all of that, it's still yaitza. Now, the rabbis would be saying that if there's such poor, such long interruptions in between this, so you're not yaitza. The rabbis would be arguing on Rabbi Yechonah. And they're saying, if there is a pause, that he not yaitza. So in other words, we're not telling you that you can't take a breath. They were telling you that you can't take a pause like Rabbi Yechonah is discussing. That, yeah, you hear, uh, you know, for each meal, you have another three or something. So that's not going to work. That's not going to work. So Kamash Malan, that no. Kamash Malan, that it's really the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda and the rabbis all that you are. You would be yaitza like Rabbi Yechonah. Maybe that's Taka the Psha. This is him came my Valaiklum. Why does it say that you can't separate even a drop? Valaiklum means even a drop. It must mean that that's because you're not even allowed to interrupt with the breath. That could only be the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda that holds Tia and Shua is one. The list in our Mishnah of the maximum amount of tkiyas is 48. We said that that would only take place on Erev Shabbos, on a Friday, in the middle of Sukkot. <coughs> now, in order to get to that list, we said that there were 12 extra sounds that were blown because of the... Um, Was it 12 or 15 sound because of the uh, the water uh, filling up the water? Next uh, four times three is 12. Okay. Umar says, We little my last years like Tony must miss like Tony. Our Mishnah didn't mention what it said in the previous Mishnah, that they would blow on the 10th step and tell us which 10, the top 10 or the bottom 10. But uh, there was another uh, three times that they would blow. It says, Masnisin Mani, who's the author of a Mishnah that does this? It says, Rebbe Lezer ben Yaakov. It's Rebbe Lezer ben Yaakov. Rebbe Lezer ben Yaakov, we know, is Mishnah Sikavanaki, special uh, teachings. He doesn't say a lot, but it's always supposed to be. That's the Allah. Our mission is Rabbi Lesben Yaakov, the Tanya Shalish, the Maila Asiris. It says that he would blow three times on the 10th step. Rabbi Lesben Yaakov, I'm a Shalish Gabi Mizbeach. Rabbi Lesben Yaakov says, no, they didn't blow on the 10th step. They only blew on the altar. That's on their way back in with the water. <coughs> if you blow on the altar, you don't blow on the 10th step. If you blow on the 10th step, you don't blow on the altar. My time at the Rabbi Lesben Yaakov. What's the reason for Rabbi Lezer ben Yaakov? He says, Kivan the taka le psicha sharem, le maila sirs, lamali the taka. I love sharu. He says, What's the 10th step? You blew when you, the gates open. Right when you open the gates, you blew the the, the, the tzitzis. Then you started to walk down. You blew on the lower gates. In the middle, you stopped to blow also. What is the middle? What is the 10th step? Hilkach, you're going to blow again. Blow when you come back. And when you bring the water back to the Mizbeach, you'll blow the again. Rabbanan Savri, the Rabbanan Hol Kivit Takla Mila Mayam, Algabi Mizbeach Lamali. Rabbanan said, We already blew on the 10th step. Why do we have to blow again on the Mizbeach? It's better to blow as we're filling it up, not afterwards. It really has to do with. Um, when they were coming back on the um, 
when they stood up the Rabba, that's how Gabi was made. They stood up the Rabba. It's the, the discussion over here could have to do with are they blowing the trumpets again for the for the Nisamayim, or would just the next blowing have to do with standing up the Rabba? Okay. Um, when Ravacha Barchanina came from the cell, he brought a brisa. And the brisa goes like this. It says, The sons of Aaron and the Kayanim would blow with their trumpets. It doesn't have to say that they would blow. It already says that they blew with the trump. He blow with the trumpets for the sacrifices. <laughs> What does it mean they shall blow? That what it's coming to tell me is that we said that if there's a carbon musaf, you blow another nine blasts. It's actually not so accurate. If there's another musaf, you blow another nine per musaf. So if there's a holiday in Shabbos and Rosh Chodesh, whatever, everyone gets another nine, every carbon. He taught the Brisa, but he also elaborated and he gave the explanation that says that they would blow an extra one for each Musa. This is going to create a problem because we said that the maximum is 48. And now we're giving this opening for combinations that could become higher than 48. The Gemara starts like this. Tanan. Okay, let's see. What was the maximum that the Mishnah said? 48. How did we get that? Because it was Friday and it was on Sukkot. The Imisa, if you're going to accept your Bacha Barchanina, that every time there's a covenant Muslim, you're going to throw another nine at it, right? There's going to be another nine. Listen, Shabbos Shabbat Why Arab Shabbos? Arab Shabbos only gives you six. Because when Shabbos is coming in, there's an extra six. But if it's Shabbos, then you have an extra Muslim for Shabbos. That gives you nine. Mishkach zachamish mechad, that's going to give you 51. Amar abzeir al fishayin teken l'psich hasharim b'shabbos. Well, on Shabbos, you don't go get to, get to get the water. You did that on Friday. So you have to drop 12. Okay. Amar who is this that doesn't care about his food? That means like we're wasting our uh, our, uh, our um, good teachings on him. <laughs> Who is this that doesn't? Uh, he's not thinking. First of all, the every day. They would open the gates. Right. Okay. And Yeah. What's happening is not that they're not getting the water at 12. He's saying that they're not blowing the shape when they open the gates. It was three, first three of the day. They would blow this. They would blow the hatzaytzus. That's an extra three. So instead of fifty-one, you would take it down to forty-eight. Um, so we're saying that 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 wouldn't be done on Shabbos. Okay. It says well. First of all, it says that they blew it every day for the opening of the gates. So the, so there are those, those three really did exist on Shabbos. And even if you say they don't, but so what? Forty-eight is also. Is also the highest number that you have. And why you have to tell me that the 48 has to do with Arab Shabbos, it could be Shabbos, and this would have been a chiddush if you would have done the 48 of Shabbos. Why? Because the, we would have heard two halachas. One of us, first of all, we would have learned that there's an extra 
uh, nine for the carbon musaf, which that's a chiddush. Um, well, that's Rav Acher Bachanina. And also we would have learned from Rav Lezer Ben Yaakov that they don't blow on the 10th step, but they would rather that they blow on the Mizbeach. How would this have taught me the halacha of Rav Lezer Ben Yaakov? He would have said that they blow on the Mizbeya. Do you have any comment on that? How would they tell me that it's not true, that, that they going that they're following Rav Joseph and Yaakov? Okay, let's see. Uh, Elama Rava, Rava says, Vishayim taken lamil mayim be Shabbos to Batsri Tura. So now Rava comes in with the answer. The truth is, on Shabbos, you don't have all of the, the you don't have the ones of filling up the water because we already filled it up from before, so you're going to be missing that. But listening, Nami, the Gemara asked Rosh Hashanah, Shachali is be Shabbos. What about Rosh Hashanah that's on Shabbos? <coughs> you see, Rosh Hashanah on Shabbos is going to give me um, Musa of uh, uh, Rosh Chaydash. Why? The Ha'ika Tlasa Musaf, Musa of Rosh Hashanah, Musa of Rosh Chaydash, Musa of the Shabbos. Three Musafim, three times nine. Right? 27 plus that regular 21. It's going to give me 48. Why doesn't it just tell me Rosh Hashanah on Shabbos? So it says, Itzich Leil Ashminon. I'm sorry, Erev Shabbos Shabbatei Chachag, Itzich Leil Ashminon, Kedr Abelaz Abanyakad. They really wanted to tell me Erev Shabbos Shabbatei Chachag because over there I have Rabbalaz Abanyakad's Shita that they don't blow on the 10th step. Atumi Ka'amar, Lisni Ha, Valay Lisni Ha. Did we say to teach this and not that? Listen, you have a listen, I want to resist suggesting that it say both. When it says that the maximum is 48, and you gave an example of Sukkot, the middle of uh, on, uh, uh, Sukkot, Erev Shabbos, the middle of Sukkot, you could have also said that it's Rosh Hashanah. That's on Shabbos. And say uh, the, another example. The Gemara says, Ton of Ashaya. We weren't saying every example that was 48. We were saying one example, and we were leaving out the rest. So whenever it does that, whenever it says one example and doesn't say the others, the Gemara says, well, you have to have several examples that you're leaving out. Otherwise, just to leave out one is not right. So it says, my Shire, the high Shire. What do you, else are you leaving out that you left out this one? It says, Shire, Erev Pesach, you left out Erev Pesach. Erev Pesach, when they were shifting the, sa- the uh, sacrifice, the cover of Pesach in the afternoon, they would say hello. And during that halal, they would get, uh, halal was divided into three. Every time they would blow the chatzitzis, that would add up to another 27. So it says, Erev Pesach Lav Shiru. Erev Pesach is not really 48. I know it sounds like there's an extra three groups. Each one says the ha- halal um, three times. Each time is supposed to be uh, another another three blasts. That's going to be 27. It's not so. The money, Rabbi Yehudi, Damar Memeim, Shokat Shlish, is like Yelay Marhafti. The third time of reciting the halal didn't give them a full nine. Uh, didn't give them a full nine. They only got three out of that because the group at the end, the group was so small. The Gemara says, "Oh, Kimna Bahamut Reishad like Rabbi Yehuda, but we started off saying that this doesn't fit with Rabbi Yehuda." Rabbi Yehuda was the one that says that they never had a full group at the end to say the halal. He said at the beginning that Rabbi Yehuda says that it was 7 and 16. And we're saying that it's 21 and 48. We weren't following Rabbi Yehuda. Umar says, 
that doesn't mean we don't hold the Krab Yud at all. We just weren't counting every Tkia true Tkia as one. Elamai Shaya, the High Shaya, rather, what was it leaving out? Erev Pesach Shcholis for Shabbos, Apek Shis Vayel Shis. Erev Pesach on Shabbos. I know you only have um, uh, uh, 21 because it's nine plus nine plus another three, but you didn't have the last six, but so what? Because Erev Shabbos, you have an extra six. So we are leaving that out, and that's telling me that we're not saying every case. Let's leave it over here. Have a good day, everyone. Oh, yeah.